This is Bill McFadden, and in this video, we're going to talk about mixing and mixing plugins and how to go about mixing a cue. So the cue that we're going to look at is this one right here, and I'll just play it through quickly so you can get an idea what we're talking about. Okay, so overall you need, of course, you need to know exactly what instruments are taking the solo at any time and make sure the solo is coming in and you want to make sure you have a balance. So that's the first thing you want to do is make sure your line levels are evenly spaced out according to your ear. And some people, you know, prefer to prefer to have a little bit more prominent melody and some people prefer to have it setting a little back further in the mix. So it's really just a matter of taste. But that's the first thing that you want to make sure is all your levels are right. So in this cue, the melody starts out with the piano, this track right here. So here's the melody track right here. Here's the accompaniment. And then there's a cello, Spitfire solo cello company. Okay, now at this point, then the solo is taken over by the Chris Hines solo cello. So let's take a look at that. Also, we have the uh, Spitfire chamber strings giving us a pad to accompany. this point then the the strings symphonic strings by Spitfire come in with the melody now I can take a look at the uh, 
the actual frequencies that are coming through. So you can see what a dramatic difference EQing the frequencies can make. And uh, that last change obviously you wouldn't consider, but if you want to tame them down a little bit, you can lower the volume or you can EQ out certain frequencies that may seem too harsh. Now let's go. The next thing we'll have is the same melody, but then we'll have another harmony come in with the symphonic string second violins. And that's back here. We also have this piano arpeggio taking place and it's set quite a bit back in the mix as you can see. Because you don't want to have it standing out front there. Now as far as some of the plugins, uh, we are using the uh, Spaces 2 is a decent plugin. We could add another reverb plugin and see how the whole mix sounds with that. Also. Uh, the Fab Filter EQ is great in that you can see the frequencies that are being reached and you can search for frequencies that you may not, that may sound a little too harsh. So right here we have the piano. So maybe right in here it's a little high. We could bring that down a little bit. Now we're going to the cello. Right here. that down a little bit. Then looking at the uh, strings. Oops, that's the piano. Remember, I turned up this so you saw what it was doing in the mix and it was a little too high. So we have it turned down. Now, another thing that's going on in the mix is the Studer. We're adding some mild compression to the 
the mix that glues everything together. So that's on each of the channels. So, and another thing we have for the solo instruments, I went ahead and put in uh, the, basically a compressor. And it seems to work fairly good. The uh, Shadow Hills is a good choice, but just about any compressor can bring out the uh, solo instruments a little bit more, just give them a little bit more umph. So for example, uh, in the piano in the beginning, here we have the Studer and the uh, Shadow Hills going on at the same time. And also, Let's go ahead and uh, just take that off the Shadow Hills so you can see the difference. So here's the piano, and then without the Shadow Hills, it still has the, uh, the tape going. Now we'll bring it in. So it definitely gives it more presence makes it stand out as a solo instrument. So now we're coming in with the cello. So notice there you have the uh, shadow hills. Now without it So it brings it up nicely. You could bring it up with volume, but this gives it more, a little bit more breadth. Now here's the strings. Here's the compressor on the strings. So if I take it off, Putting it back on. And then we have the counter melody come in. So there we have the counter melody without it. And we're just using a mild compression on the uh, solo instruments, just the default, which isn't aggressive. It isn't even medium. It's just a light compression. And then the, the Studer on everything, the Studer tape. Now, one other thing we can do, which sort of finish the finishing touch, is we go down to inserts on the uh, main bus. I'll go ahead and type in ozone. There we go, mastering. And since this is primarily instruments that you would use in a uh, classical setting, we'll go to the generous, genre specific mastering and then we'll go down to classical. And then they put in a uh, equalizer uh, dynamic EQ and dynamics and a maximizer. And one other thing you can do is add the uh, imager. And let's see what it sounds like with it. Okay, so going back to the beginning, I'll go ahead and uh, bring it in and take it out.
So you see, you can tweak it and tweak it and tweak it. But generally speaking, you just want to come up with a, a fairly acceptable Q, fairly decent levels, and just go ahead and uh, once it's reasonably good, you might want to come back the next day and tweak a little bit. But the main thing is getting your balances, maybe using some uh, little EQ in the harsher instruments. All instruments usually have a harsh point. And then go ahead and glue it all together with a tape, some kind of a tape, and then go ahead and uh, maybe add a compressor on your solo instruments to bring out that. And then this is a great plug-in to finish, top everything off and give you uh, an equalizer, dynamic EQ, as well as some dynamics, and then a maximizer on top of that. And then for spatial issues, the imager is great. You can uh, spread out the spectrum in the space and just give your sound a wider sound to it. So it's more lush. So Bill McFadden, Signing off from TomePure.com.